lot of other things that I'm too tired to list. Let's talk about records. I really wanted to get in, uh, more in depth with my collection and uh, you know talking to you guys about records and you know essential listening and all of that. I apologize too. Uh, I'm really bad at talking on the camera and staying uh, on topic. So please bear with me, Jake. Please edit this nicely because uh, you know he's the editor and uh, he might fuck with me a little bit, but that's fine because I mean that makes it entertaining, right? So. so, 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 so. In this video, I'm going to go through 10 records uh, within the classic rock genre. And I know that's tough because, you know, there's so many things that could be filed under what is classic rock. And um, so I really, really, this was really, 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 really hard. So I really, really did my best to narrow it down to just 10 essential records that I guess are generally considered within classic rock that everybody, if you own a record player, you need to own this record in some sort of capacity. It doesn't have to be original, it doesn't have to be fucking some cool Japanese, German, press, whatever. As long as you own this thing, you need this because whenever you throw it on the turntable, you are guaranteed maximum joy, um, in my opinion, in my humble opinion at least. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. I've already wasted a minute and 35 seconds. <laughs> I talk too much. Number 10, let's start it off with a classic band who you Mostly, uh, you definitely all know them, and let's just hope that you love them uh, as well. And I don't blame you if you don't. You know they ripped off a lot of guys um, in the in the beginning. Um, you know, but fuck it, here we go. Led Zeppelin. Um, now Led Zeppelin have a lot of albums that could be considered essential. In fact, almost every single one except the last three is considered essential. With artists like that, I had to pick my personal favorites that are my favorite to, th to throw on the turntable and just my favorites in general, I guess I would say. Well, this is Led Zeppelin, Physical Graffiti. I think it's their seventh album. I could be wrong there, but whatever, who's counting? Uh, I guess we all are. Um, Physical Graffiti, in my opinion, is um, the best uh, Led Zeppelin record to own on vinyl for many reasons. One, it is, it's first of all, it's two records. It's, there's not a dull moment in my opinion. Sure, there's some tracks that are stronger than, other, str stronger than others, but I mean, this is where Led Zeppelin really shines uh, within how uh, they're songwriting in my opinion. There are a lot of really dope moments on this record. And as a drummer, man, Bonzo's drumming all over the place on this is just fucking sublime. Um, Specifically, I think my favorite song on here is probably track two, The Rover. Um, I don't know why, but it is just so just nasty, good, uh, I guess just blues rock, uh, and the drumming is impeccable. There's another track on here called Ten Years Gone, which I just fucking love. Um, it reminds me a lot of when my dog died when I was 10, and my dog was also 10, and my dad played it a lot when my dog died to help me cope with it, and... Um, so I think I just have a lot of nostalgia with this record, but I've liked this album for so long, ever since I was a little kid, and I still love it just as much as I did back then. So I really think everybody, uh, if you're going to own a Led Zeppelin album, this is the one to own. And you could find these anywhere between, realistically, if it's beat to shit, probably five bucks at the most, if it's super clean, 50 But, you know, you could get like a pretty good used copy for anywhere between 20 to $25, so... Number 10, Led Zeppelin, Physical Graffiti, can't go wrong. Number nine, another band that you may uh, love or hate and hopefully love because I think they're fucking great. I don't care what anyone says. The Beatles. No, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm drinking this kombucha. It's really fucking good. And it makes you burp. Number nine, The Beatles, Abbey Road. Now another band that people love or hate and they have plenty, plenty of albums that could be considered essential. I think this one is my favorite. It's definitely the one that I've listened to the most from them. I really like how side B is like cyclical and every song really just uh, bleeds into one another so perfectly. I like how this album has a lot of hits on it and a lot of songs that people don't even know exist. It's really hard to say why I love this record so much, but every time I throw it on, I'm always stoked to hear it. It always sounds so fresh and really, in my opinion, this is the Beatles 
uh, shining moment as songwriters. Maybe not as innovators, but definitely as songwriters. I mean, you got so many good songs on here. I don't even know where to begin. There's really not a dull moment. There's really not one bad song on here. Seriously, give this shit a listen if you really haven't. And if you have never gotten to the Beatles, uh, you know, if you're like live under a fucking rock or something, uh, <laughs> give this a shot. Just give this a shot. And I could get into so many other great Beatles records, but this is the one. Number eight. I'm sure you guys know who this guy is. Can you read that? <laughs> I know you can't, but hey, you know the cover. Unless you read Japanese, then that's a... Uh, David Bowie, The Rise and the Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Back in 2016, I went through a gigantic, gigantic Bowie phase and listened to so many of his records and fell in love with the guy. And he passed away at the peak of when I was really into him. And he was actually the only artist I ever cried over when he died. That was a very emotional time in my life. He got, his music got me through a lot. Not him personally, okay? Like, you know, we weren't friends or anything. This record, man, you could only talk, you could only say so many things about it. Um, so many things have been said about it that I would just be repeating myself at this point, but it's definitely the Bully album to own on wax if you uh if you you need one and uh this is a really cool japanese press that just sounds fucking amazing and I, I just had to buy it when i got it you know i can't say much about it other than that you really need to own this record as it's just essential listening in any collection everything about it my favorite track on here probably gotta be man i don't know moon is daydream it's a perfect album um as fantana would say it's a tan it's a 10. It's a 10. Number seven. I think that's what we're on. Number seven. Another guy who you all might, uh, you know, hate or love, whatever. I hope you love him. Bob Dylan. Another guy who you could say that, you know, he's got so many uh, quote unquote essential records that you could uh, pick from. But I think this one is definitely, definitely has to be my favorite Dylan record. Um, just like the Led Zeppelin album, this is a this is a double album, so you definitely get a bang for your buck. And like I said before, I like this album a lot too. That has a lot of his, uh, I guess, quote unquote hits and a lot of songs that people don't even really know. But yeah, I think this is just my favorite Dylan album if I had to pick it, and I think it's the one that everybody should definitely own in their collection. There's so many great songs on here, but I think easily my favorite one has to be Visions of Joanna. Goddamn, is that does that man just know how to write poetry like no other? Um, you know, not the best voice, but that's not what does it for me. You know, it's the insanely smart lyricism that he was uh, just delivering at the time to the masses. And I don't know. I really like the album cover, too. It's just it's just him. It's just like, yep, that's me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Shut up, Nick. All right. Number six. OK, we're getting to the good stuff. We're getting to some of my favorites. All right. Another band that People seem to love or hate you. Aren't you noticing a pattern here? The Doors, okay. The self-titled record, their very first album. Goddamn, I think this is a band that I got into at obviously a very young age just from listening to the radio and stuff and whatever, you know, my dad had on. This is an album that has aged so well with me over the years. Um, it's just, man, I don't even know where to begin. It's just, it's, it, it, it's, it's just like, it's just trippy, great rock and roll psychedelic rock it's fun it's beautiful there's really not a bad track on here it's honestly perfect start to finish this is really one of those just anytime records that you can throw on really like i said not a bad song but i think my favorite probably is light my fire i know that's kind of a you know the corny pick to say because it's uh you know the hit on here but man, just that solo extended solo part where ray, ray, ray manzarek is just fucking going off and the whole band is going off and it's just it's just fantastic and the end the song the end the very last song on here duh what a fucking masterpiece um you really can't go wrong with this doors record i believe this is a this is a japanese press no ob strip but yeah i mean i tend to get really high fidelity or try to get really high fidelity presses of my favorite records just because if they're my favorite i want them to fucking sound good and uh this is one of those albums that you just definitely should own if you're just starting your vinyl collection or you never heard if it's lacking okay we only got a few left oh god guys oh my god we're down to five. Oh my god we're down to five we're down to five. Oh my god oh my god all right y'all drum roll we're getting to the top five we're getting to the top five Ha! Another band that people fucking hate or love. The Velvet Underground. White Light. White Heat. Okay, so I know what you're all thinking. 
But the banana one, that's the one that everybody says you need. Well, duh. In fact, you need all four of their, you need four, you need all four of their first four records, okay? They're all fucking great. But this one's my favorite, and I think it's the best one to own on vinyl because it's a fucking journey. It's so weird and so out there, but it has its really catchy moments, and it's really ahead of its time. I could go, I, I could go into detail about every single song here, but I would bore you, and I would bore myself. And I don't want to do that. I feel like I've already done that enough because I'm not that well-spoken. So thank you for bearing with me if you've lasted this long. Anyway, get this fucking record. It's the shit. Let's just say the last song on here, Sister Ray, is essentially like a 17-minute proto-punk jam, which is essentially the reason why the Buzzcocks formed, which is fucking cool. And every song on here is great. The Gift, White Light, White Heat, Lady Godiva's Operation, which is probably my favorite Velvet Underground song. There she comes now. I heard her call my name. Yeah. Perfect record. It's a 10. It's a 10. Jesus Christ. Number four. Oh my God. Number four. We're really getting there, people. Another band that people seem to love or hate. You get the pattern now at this point. The Rolling Stones. Now, you may not recognize this cover immediately unless you're a huge record nerd like myself, but this is Rolling Stones' Sticky Fingers, but you must be used to seeing the zipper cover, you know? So sorry for that one. <laughs> anyway, this is um, a Spanish press because the zipper cover was actually banned in uh, in Spain. I think that's pretty fucking cool. And I actually like this art a lot better than the zipper cover. I, like, you know, the, the, I don't know. Cause like you actually see fingers on it. It's coming out of a can that looks sticky. I think it's more fitting. It really comes with, it comes with this really cool uh, uh, lyric slash. <laughs> wow, Jesus Christ. Uh, lyric slash. Um, insert sheet um, in here. That's in Spanish, which is fucking, fucking just so cool. Anyway, to the record. So many albums that you could deem essential from the Rolling Stones, uh, but this one is my favorite, and I think it's definitely the one that people should own on vinyl, because it's just such a great, fun rock and roll listen all from start to finish, you know, when, once you drop that needle and take it off, flip it over. And it's got my favorite Rolling Stones song on here, which is Can't Me Hear Me Knockin'. Because that is just a perfect song of just rock and roll, blues rock, and like Latin jazz, all combined so tastefully together. And there's not really a bad song on here, and there's also really a lot of underrated cuts on here. Like, I think Sway is such an underrated Rolling Stone song, like, goddamn. And same with Bitch, like, damn, that song just makes me want to fucking throw a brick in a fucking window, but I know I can't do that because I would get arrested, and uh, I'm not in, the, not in the mood to do that, especially during uh, this uh, quote-unquote pandemic that we're in. Moving on, now we're starting to get to, like, some all-time shit here, at least for me. So number three, Neil Young. If you hate on Neil Young, there's gotta be something wrong with you, man. He is just fucking easily one of the greatest singer-songwriters of all time. Definitely in my top five. He has so many amazing records that so many people could argue that are essential. And this one is easily my favorite. And it's definitely the one that I've found myself growing, going back to the most and constantly throwing on the turntable. It seriously never gets old. It never absolutely has, it never gets old for me. I really like this album a lot too, because you know, it doesn't really have necessarily a lot of his hits on it, but in my opinion, they're all hits to me. I mean, every song just cuts perfectly deep within my soul. And I know that sounds corny, but all the way from Don't, Don't Cry No Tears to Cortez the Killer Man. Oh, actually last track is out through my sales. Everything about this record is just absolutely fantastic. This is an album I'll, I'll probably be listening to all the way up until the day I die. Um, I know that sounds dramatic, but the day that Neil Young passes, I'm definitely going to be heartbroken because this album and so many other of his albums is just touched my very soul so many times. And, uh, like I said, not to be corny, but goddamn is this album just fucking amazing start to finish and you sh all should own it. All right, y'all, number two. You guys ready for number two? Now, this is an album that you guys have probably seen before. Um... The Beach Boys, Pet Sounds. This is absolutely essential. Back in 2016, I went through a huge Beach Boy phase when I was getting into just, I guess, I don't know, more uh, quote unquote obscure, cool guy music and understanding about and learning more about music production and stuff. And uh, this record is, on, it lives up to the hype in my opinion. It really is a perfect record. Brian Wilson really was just doing things that were so ahead of their contemporaries time. And I don't, it's really hard for me to talk about this record these days because it honestly makes 
makes me really emotional. Like it's one of those few records that have genuinely, genuinely made me cry on a few occasions because uh, let's just say uh, during that time I was like experiencing like true heartbreak for the first time and this album was like my uh, my soundtrack for that. It's genuinely perfect and everybody should own it. Everybody should listen to it. It's just orchestral pop rock music at its absolute finest and the songwriting is amazing and everything about it. I'm, I'm repeating myself at this point, but you get the point. It's, it's really high on the list for a very important reason, um, for many reasons, and you really can't go wrong with it. All right, you guys ready for number one? You guys ready for number one? Number one? Dude, my nose is so red, I don't know what the hell it is. I hope I'm okay. All right, you guys know who this is, and you are stupid if you don't like him because he's the absolute best. Only released three albums. Every single one was fantastic. Innovator on the guitar. Amazing singer, in my opinion. A lot of people think he was a great singer. Um, Had the best fucking backing band ever, ever, ever. Anyways, here we go. Jimi Hendrix. Are you experienced? Goddamn. What can I say about this album that hasn't already been said? Talk about coming out guns blazing with your debut record. This guy just really changed rock music forever coming out with this album, in my opinion. I think it, <laughs> I'm tripping. I don't know if this album came out in 1966 or 1967. I guess I'm not that much of a nerd about it, but it is so essential in anybody's uh, record collection that they, you know, if you don't own this record on wax, you absolutely need to own it. This is actually an original, um, original UK press on track record. Um, that I actually got for a very reasonable price. And uh, it's not that clean. It's got a little bit of surface noise to it, but I don't know. I kind of like when records are like that, but I'm sure I'll find a cleaner copy one day. But yeah, man, this is an absolutely just perfect, you know, just rock and roll, garage rock and psych rock all blended together at its absolute finest. Like I said about a lot of these other albums on here, it's genuinely just perfect start to finish. It's an absolute journey, especially side two is really starts to get into trippy territory, like on Third, from, thir third Stone from the Sun. The way it ends out with the title track, uh, Are You Experienced, is just fucking perfect and you know you got it opening up with fucking foxy lady oh yeah i need to differentiate the two you must be you know there's the, also the american version that has the the yellow circle cover too and that has a different track listing but this is the original uk track listing that i think is much better order wise and it omits a couple songs and i think adds a couple different ones anyway this version is the one to own in my opinion jimmy is god always has been it's a shame that he was taken from us so early I can only imagine the shit that he could have kept doing if he was alive. Number one, this shit is number one for a reason because you, you're you just dumb if you don't like this record or Jimi Hendrix in general because he's just, he's God, Jimmy's God. I remember when I was a kid, I went to Seattle and I went to that EMP Experience Music Project Museum and uh, you could write a little sign book, uh, a little book of like, oh, you know, where you're from and just be like, hey, I was here, blah, blah, blah. And the only thing that I remember reading was just some dude wrote, Jimmy is God. <laughs> and uh, it's true. Jimmy's God. He's God. Look at him. He's God. And there's his disciples, Mitch Mitchell and Noel Redding. Like, you just can't go wrong. And Mitch Mitchell, man, as a drummer, just the best fucking drumming of all time. Like, for real. He's, I don't know if he's my favorite all time, but he's definitely top five. And we could, we could get into that in another video when I talk about my favorite albums for drumming and all that other stuff. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna keep this series heavy with a lot of different, uh, you know, categories of videos of, uh, you know, essential records that you should own in different genres. Obviously, this was the classic rock one. I'm gonna do one on hip hop, psych, reggae, all different kinds of stuff, um, essential drumming records. Just stay tuned because I'm having fun. There's no slowing down with me doing this. I hope this is something that I can continue to do for a long time. And I would like for you guys to be on the journey with me because we're in some weird times right now. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but this is definitely, uh, you know, a joy to me. And I hope it brings joy to you guys too. On that note, cheers. Love you all. Follow me on Instagram if you don't. Nick guy one and Ferocious Fidelity for my, uh, uh, my record page. Much love to y'all. Cheers.